had dropped off their loved ones at the hospital and then never and saw never them saw again. again. That's fucked. Welcome back to Podcast the Hero. <laughs> <laughs> we said it at the same time. Mm. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Cornbot, which is completely useless now that the tour is over. Um, <clears throat> this episode is also brought to you by our patrons, uh, Mitch. Aaron MFJ, Viva Hate, I Am Dimitri, and the World is My Sack, Maddie G, Allie, Benjamin Taylor, Dave the Film Guy, Whoa. Jake, Bob, Josh, and Steven Exposure, Progtoff, I, Fritzy, will, give a, will gift a top-tier Patreon subscription for one month to Guitarzan2112 from the Discord. That's nice of you. Julia. Uh, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. The fat brown kid, foolish bail. Rody told me I had the best forearms at the Philly show. That's MF Yeti. You're like the prettiest girl at the ball. I did. Uh, that's a true story. <laughs> Yeti's fucking Red forearms. Boss. Is that doxing to <laughs> expose their username? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeti's forearms are fucking <laughs> wild, dude. Great through he's the He's been on this. He was on the, the one of the last. Uh, uh, what do we call them? Friend of sodes? Uh, fanny fanny sodas. Fanny sodas. Um, Brett Boss Blackwood. Yes, I be a Newfoundlander by Spit Goth Yo. Absolutely the best podcast of work in progress. Rodies Road Raging. Rodies Rodies Road Raging. Rodent. Sebastodon. I have a confession. This is a fake mustache. I swallow cum. Source the odd is a result of a spray fart. Come to New Brunswick. Uh, Rob the anti-human Peggy Thrill. Actually, I won't be a Newfoundlander by. After all, I realize I'm too busy. 23 hamsters, fire fee, a common thread. I, Fritzy, would rather be interviewing the Arkells. Whoa! Zane, Rody loves my dink. Rody and Fritzy's foot fetish only fans now open. Uh, Deconomus, after visiting the Hockey Hall of Fame, I believe the Colorado Avalanche deserve the Stanley Cup this season. Oh, God. Zach, the final Dan Cage Pandas, Corn Man, Jeffrey Mason, uh, TBJ, Yuri Fruit, Ashwin, and High Tops. Wow. That was some beautiful stuff. I don't care for the Colorado Avalanche. Why do you hate the Avalanche so much? Cause I'm a Wings fan, and we had like that huge rivalry in the '90s, and like oh, they had those huge fights. Yeah, there's like, goalie yeah, fights, okay. and but still, McCarty beating the shit out of uh, what's his name, Claude Lemieux, and but like you disrespected Joe Sackick in that fucking podcast. Yeah, he's an av. Nobody, Fuck him, like nobody disrespects Joe Sackick. I've never heard of it. Well, him and Peter Forsberg can go. Eat frogs. I heard one time fucking uh, Sean Avery. Especially Patrick Waugh. Sean Avery yelled something at fucking, uh, oh my God, my brain is not working. Adam Foote. He yelled something. I was thinking Adam Foote. Why did you say that? Because I hate Adam Foote, too. He's from Whitby. I don't care. The son's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but- uh, he yelled something at Joe Sackick, like, hey, yeah. old man, fuck you, or whatever. And Brett Hall turned over and, like, grabbed him by the lapels. And he said, <laughs> you do not speak to Mr. fucking, I was going to say Mr. Foot, Mr. Sackick, <laughs> like that. You know, Foot, Sack. They go That's to- true. A lot of people have fetishes. No, nobody has a sack <laughs> fetish. I don't, I think they do. A sack, well, men. Yes. Like, I think most, uh, this is maybe uh, risky territory that I'm entering, but I think most fetishes are, like, uh, men. It's most men being like, ah, stick a foot up my ass and shit like that. Like, I know women have fetishes as well, but I think they just, like, tend to be less fucking crazy about it. I don't know. I think it's exactly equal. I think we just don't talk about it as much. I think the human the human species, whether you're man, woman, whatever, uh, all has the capacity for fucked up fetishes. Yeah, that's true. Like when I think of like when I think of women's fetishes, I think of them drawing like uh, like hot twink animals. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'm allowed to use the word twink, but it, it felt like I was trying not to use it in a derogatory term. <laughs> 
but it also felt appropriate. Hot animals? Yeah, like little wolf boys that are also you gay. Think that's what women's fetishes are? Dude, that is a full thing. Like, there are girls on the internet drawing, like, man wolves that are just like... <laughs> There's a, a honestly a lot of um like uh romance novels that are about like man wolves. Yeah, of course. But there's like, you know like how there's a whole bunch of like weird uh not weird, but gay fanfic regarding like One Direction came out and like a bunch of girls were just like imagine they were all like gay and pounding each other and like they just like it's not gay men that are doing that it's fucking <laughs> well I mean a lot of a lot of dudes really like girl on girl stuff that's Why true good point man like dude on dude good point that's a really good point that I hadn't considered <sighs> I uh I don't know. You're going to go read some One Direction fanfic? Yeah. Hell yeah. I think so. Me too, man. I might have. Me too. Uh, do you have a post tour? Do you like, you know how like there's postpartum depression? Yeah. Do you get post tour depression? No. You're ready to be I home mean, like, when it's over. I miss my buddies for sure. Um, like, it's weird being in such close proximity with your buddies, and then, like, all of a sudden, you're alone. Yeah. Like, waking up every day, climbing to the front, being like, Sup, H, what's up, Mikey, Sandra, where's coffee at? But, like, here, I wake up because my son is, like, babbling nonsense at me, and I'm going, man, <laughs> wish you were cooler. <laughs> um. How can you get the experience of touring while also getting the choice to sleep in your own bed and see your family whenever you want? Oh, you can't. I think you can. If your family and you join the military together or something like that. Well, I was going to say, if you bought an old school bus and converted it into your house and then moved your family in with you, and then you just drove that old school bus all around... Every day you sleep in your own bed. No, I hate that, Fritzy. I hate that. Why? I don't know. <laughs> your wife could get dreads. I don't want to live in a school bus. Your kid could just always be dirty or dirty dirtier. He is always dirty. <laughs> um, there's no seatbelts on a school bus, Fritzy, and everybody knows well, yeah. it. But you could have like a bucket for a toilet. Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? How is a bucket toilet not a good thing? I mean, it is a good thing if you're lost in the woods. Well, if you're lost in the woods, all you need is, like, a shoe to kick a hole in the ground, and then you just... And the ability to maybe move a log next to that hole so you have someplace to sit? Why would you even bother digging a hole? Just poop on the ground. Because there might be, like, a... Um... A rare endangered species that will die from eating your shit? No, it won't. It might. All you... I mean, not my shit, your shit. If you're lost in the woods, all you've been eating for days is shit, so... Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Oh my Uh, god, what the fuck just happened with that tangent? (laughs) On last week's episode, you said your first meal after the tour was going to be garlic sandwiches. I did? Made from garlic spit onto bread from Tim's mouth. I, said, I, I watched that episode. First of yeah, all, it was that's exactly what you said. It was almost unlistenable. Yeah, uh, it was. It was well done with what you had to work with. But my God, Fritzy, <laughs> it's pretty bad. No, it was great. It was great. But the the parts with the the little mics just yeah. I don't I don't know how to adjust that. But it was everything was clipping so bad. Yeah. I think you adjust it by uh, just buying different ones that they don't sell on Amazon. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, no, the answer to that is never film footage from a from my phone again for the episode. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was it was not the easiest thing to do and not the most fun thing to do. Well, I thought you did a great job. Well, thanks. I don't believe because otherwise we would have had to go. 
one week without, and you made sure. Nah, I would have come up with something. No, you did a great job. It was horrible, but you did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you watched it, and you're saying you don't recall saying into that microphone. No, I didn't eat a spitty little garlic cum garlic sandwich. sandwiches made from the garlic spit onto bread from Tim's mouth. I said that I smelled a fucking huge garlic burp while we were on stage, and I'm confident it was Tim's. Yeah. But that's the truth. Where else is the garlic going to come from for a garlic sandwich? I said a Ninja Creamy. <laughs> you said, I think you said barley sandwiches. I, oh, I did say barley sandwiches because that means beer. Beer, yeah. And that was probably true. But it was funnier that you wanted garlic sandwiches. Uh, did you? Yeah, I said barley sandwiches, and you're like, garlic sandwiches? <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's recap. Okay. Leg two. Sounds good. Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. It's right over the border. And I don't remember it. You don't. That's the crazy part. I don't. Why is that the crazy part? <laughs> Some guy came to one of the VIPs a little later on, and he was like, hey, I was at the Buffalo show. And we were like, Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> I, I, no, I do remember the Buffalo show. How? What about it? Uh, that it happened. Uh, yeah, I remember. I like I couldn't figure out the venue. I just I figured it out. Walk in, the stage is like behind you. It was a great show. Buffalo showed up. It was cool. It's like nice little like three hundred cap room or something like that. But uh, I liked it. It was fun. But what about Louisville? Oh, Louisville, I enjoyed. Really? Yeah. Was Skippy there? Did you get to meet Skippy? Now, are you referring to that screw to Skippy? No, there's a there's a dude. Oh, Skippy! Skip Skippy! Skip a. Skip a. Uh, I didn't meet Skippy, oh. uh, which is weird because I know I know what they look like, uh, but I didn't meet them. But I very much did enjoy it. I went uh, to this place called Night Swimming, which is a coffee place, um, and I got a hat and I wear it all the time and. Uh, it makes me think of The Simpsons, and the coffee there was quite good. Uh, but, you know, it's like Lenny or something. He goes, alcohol and night swimming, a winning combination. <laughs> so that's, I like that hat. Louisville was great. A really enjoyable show. We haven't been there in like, fuck, wait. I think Louisville you haven't been to in a while. Yeah, it's been like 15 years. Uh, but yeah, so we went, we got, Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong spot. Where did I get that hat? Night swimming. Nashville? No. Charlotte? Yes. So here's what happened in Louisville. Essentially the same. So that, all that, what I just said was about <laughs> Charlotte. Was about Charlotte. Uh, but I didn't meet Skip A, regardless. Mm -hmm. Irregardless. Um, but so H and I went uh, skipping around for a coffee. And let me think about it. Let me think about how the strip was. I can't remember where we got coffee at, but anyways, we were looking for a gym for a long fucking time, and every gym in Louisville is closed for some reason. Yeah, why would you want your business to be Oh my God, I remember Louisville now. I remember what happened. I wandered off the bus alone. I filmed a Cho Diary about it. And all of a sudden, I was in this, like, party. It was like, I had just woken up. I was looking for a coffee and a poo. And I was like, there was this, like, street party happening. And, like, I turned my camera on. was like, what's happening? And, like, there was a live band playing. And I was like, it feels like that, like, there was a big screen. And I was like, it looks like the singer is, like, coming at me. And then I looked up, and he was, like, right in front of me. And he, like, climbed on this table and was singing, like, while this family was trying to eat. <laughs> And I was, like, uh, really confused by it. Turns out it was, like, the end of a half marathon oh. uh, that I'd stumbled into. And then I went and found Scroot, had coffee, and then we were searching around for a gym that never was and stumbled across a Jell-O Roll concert. Are you familiar with Jell-O Roll? Yes. I'm, I'm familiar with who he is. Was that that day? Or is that Nashville? 
I'm so confused about what happened when. So I feel like Jelly Roll would have been Nashville. It wasn't. If you ran into a Jelly Roll. No, it wasn't. It was, it was, uh, it was Louisville. Louisville? Yeah. And then, so that way was the Louisville day. Cause yeah. And so I bought a t-shirt. I bought a Jelly Roll t-shirt because they were selling it outside. Uh, but then I was like, Hey, I don't really know anything about this guy. And like, maybe he associates with people I don't want to associate with. (laughs) And like, I see a lot of very specific kind of people at his concert, Mm -hmm. but whatever. So I wore it on stage to be like, Hey, jelly roll, whatever made mention of the fact that I don't know who the fuck he is, but I got in the venue and Josh from 68, Mm -hmm. the 68 was like, the 68. He was like, Hey, jelly roll. We know those guys. And I was like, well, they're down the street. And he was like, what? So as soon as they finished playing, they ran over there, got in contact with Jello Roll's tour manager, Jello Roll, and they got like fucking front row seats and like sat and watched the Jelly Roll concert, um, <laughs> like getting sprayed on by rain and getting licked on by fire. And uh, they, from the videos they showed, it looked like just a wild time. And so I looked up Jelly Roll afterwards. I still gave away the t-shirt to Sandra. Um, but, um, I saw some stuff that I liked. I saw some stuff that I didn't like. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything that was like politically enraging. Uh, but I saw him headbanging to Kublai Khan with, uh, Travis Barker and MGK. And I was like, oh, that is fucking horrible. <laughs> like, Travis Barker can't seem to find the one for some reason. <laughs> and MGK K has clearly never fucking actually like headbanged or heard mm-hmm. like metalcore slash hardcore in his fucking life. That was the worst thing I saw. That was the second <laughs> worst thing I saw because I saw him do a reinterpretation of Country Roads with MGK. That's the fucking worst thing I've ever heard in my life. That's like the the whole thing right now, though, right? It's like all this like weird country rap metal crossover y shit that's going on right now. I mean, now. I guess so. That post Malone record's pretty good. Like it seems like honestly a guy that just like loves country that's like doing an homage to it, but like MGK? Mm-hmm. Like just another fucking genre for him to shit on. Mm-hmm. Like get out of here! I wish there was like battle rap country musicians like Eminem or something that would come fucking <laughs> beat the shit out of him and get him the fuck out of there. <laughs> like changing the fucking lyrics to country roads and like all the comments underneath are so positive. They're like, "Oh, I've never heard MGK sing before. He's so good." Like, no, he fucking isn't. He's horrible. <laughs> But then I saw Jelly Roll with Kelly Clarkson on her show, and she sings his song with him. Uh, and like I watched like a behind the scenes thing, and he seems like a really like gracious and wonderful person. And then I watched them perform the song, and it was wonderful. So I am of two minds of Jelly Roll, and I did not mean to waste everyone's time <laughs> talking about Jelly Roll this much. So what happened in Nashville then? If that didn't happen in Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. Is it as like tourist trappy as they say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like it's good. I, it, it's nice. It's cool. I had big plans because we had a day off there uh, to go like do some touristy stuff because like I've never really done it. Um, go to the Bluebird or whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but <sighs> that night, like right before we went on, I was like, "Yeah, there's something wrong in my throat." Like. <laughs> I could feel like just like post nasal drip in a way that I was like, eh. <laughs> so it's like whatever you do, you warm up and fucking go. But I got on stage and I was all fucked up, um, just from uh, what's that called? Uh, congestion, sinus congestion. Yeah, it's just like while I was going, like just so much shit was like running down my throat that it like fucked my voice over. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the end of the set, I couldn't speak. Like my voice was fucking gone we didn't play two encore songs we only played one and then the next day i laid in my bed and i watched an entire mini series on netflix i got out of my bed to eat 
and was just like the most bum man on earth. I was thinking like, mm -hmm. we're canceling the next show. Like we're fucking canceling it. It's like, I can't speak. I don't know when I'm going to be able to speak again. And then I woke up the next day and kind of got out of bed and was like, uh, 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 and I went and had a coffee. And then as my voice started warming up for the day, I was like, oh, I actually have some like speaking tone. And then we did sound check and I was like, it's weak, but it's there. And I'm like, if I can just warm up, I'll be fine. And it was like, it was fine. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I remember you texted me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he's not in a good place right now. Well, I was like, when that shit happens, like, first of all, like, yeah. I'm just like in my bunk alone all day, just yeah. like being like, I'm the fucking worst. Why does this always happen to me? Like, yeah. I'm not doing anything wrong as far as I know, but just like a little something goes south and then you're fucked. Yeah. Um, but then I just like didn't speak for a day and it came back and I like, I thought like, a day is not going to fix this. Yeah. But it did. And then my voice just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And by the end of the tour, I was like an invincible man. Yeah, well, you were great. Well, thank you. I mean, I didn't mean, I wasn't saying I'm fucking great. I'm as good as I was capable of being. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought you sounded really, really good. Well, thank you, Fritz. And, um, uh, but then after Nashville, you guys went to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, really didn't want to cancel Atlanta because, yeah. like, that's where '68 are from. Yeah, that's where we, we we saw the the Dow Boys that day, and I was just being like, "What the fuck?" But then I went on stage, like I did my warm up as always. Went on stage, felt great. Had a couple beers. Felt awesome. That's awesome. That's all. Like that's all I want is I want to have a good show and a couple beers, one big glass of whiskey. Yeah. A couple more beers after that. <laughs> then one more whiskey before bed. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then set an alarm for two hours, wake up, two more beers. Yeah. Um <clears throat> then you went to Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. Which is in Maryland. That's true. If you if you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay. Now that's a weird one, I think. Um I have never been to this venue that we were at. Mm -hmm. Um I woke up that morning just, like, almost shitting my bed uh, for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, you probably ate some bad eggs. Yeah, so I had to run, and I found some coffee shop that was right across the street. I got a coffee, went to the bathroom, then got out, and I was like, it's a beautiful fucking day. Where are we? And I looked at my past, and I was like, fucking Baltimore? We've only ever played, like, autos, which is great, and, like, maybe some other places, but it's like, it was, I always thought the Baltimore was kind of a shithole, right? Like, <laughs> I got, like, really gently mugged in Baltimore one time. <laughs> gently? Yeah, like, I walked into a bar and some guy hey. just walked up behind me, put his hands in my coat pockets and then my pants pockets, and then, like, took what was ever there. <laughs> but there wasn't, like, anything in my pockets. So, I got, like, super <laughs> gently mugged. Uh <laughs> But so, like, did I always thought it was a shithole, but it was the nicest day I've had in forever. Did you go see the Chesapeake? Yeah. That's pretty great. It's a boat. No, oh, the bay, the big bay. I don't know. There was a boat that said Chesapeake in the bay. Yeah, probably. And there was, I went and saw, there was a submarine, and it was, like, the last fucking submarine to, uh... It, it was the like last submarine in like the American Second World War that was like fucking active. Hmm. Um and then in in the other little bay area they had the like final remaining like warship from Pearl Harbor. And like then we rented a little dragon boat that was like a not dragon boat, it was it looked like a pirate yeah. ship and then uh right. It was like a little electric boat. We just like puttered around in the bay. And then. That's the day you guys were all singing Stan Rogers. Yeah. And went for a run with Scrooty. Uh, 
And then we played the show, and it was like a really good show. Like people showed the fuck up. Like Baltimore is like a bumping scene for some reason. And like it was awesome. That's great. like after the show, Josh came up and he was like, "What the?" F-? He didn't say "What the fuck" because <laughs> he he doesn't often he doesn't swear. swear. But he goes, "What was that?" And I was like, "That was a good rock show." And he was like, "It was a good rock show." He's like, "Is this Baltimore?" And I was like, <laughs> "I guess this is Baltimore, Baltimore City, Baltimore City hate crew." <laughs> you don't like us and we don't like you. Uh Philly was next. Yeah. Philly's uh Philly's Underground Arts. It's it, yep. it's it's a really cool venue. I like it. Uh there's like a nice market by where you can get like some cool food and all sorts of stuff like that and um we did so uh but like the the shows in Philly are crazy. Like I don't I don't know, like I don't want to be singing praises the whole fucking time. But like the truth is, like Baltimore's crowd started moshing right the fuck away. It was cool, and then we got to Philly, and Philly was so loud I couldn't hear my in ear monitors. You know what I mean? Like they are the la- there were two people in the mosh pit the whole time that had hollowed out pumpkins on their head <laughs> the whole time. Uh, this lovely person named Meredith. Came up and sang almost the majority of Plato's. She was incredible. Um, this delightful company brought us the most ice cream and ice cream related treats that I've ever seen in my life. And they even took consideration for me um, and gave a bunch of vegan ice cream. I'm going to look up exactly what that's called because they deserve a shout out. Um, uh, Frosty Falls ice cream. Ooh. It's in Philly. It's 96 DeKalb Street, Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. They got vegan treats. They got all sorts of stuff. Uh, we had a fridge full of, we had a freezer full of ice cream for the remainder of the tour. I ate ice cream every night. I, I still somehow remained like lost weight on the tour. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe muscle. <laughs> Maybe muscle? Yeah. You didn't get to the gym enough? Uh, no, Nashville was the last day. I found a really nice gym in Nashville. HK and I went there, had a great time. We we're like, fuck, we're coming back here tomorrow, dude. We got the day off. And then I woke up and was like, oh, yeah, I can't speak. What a great fucking day. <laughs> and then I didn't go to the gym uh, again. From Philly, you went to Brooklyn, New York? Yeah. And that was great, too. I'm glad we're like, I'm glad we're doing this retrospective because like, like I feel like this whole tour was awesome except Detroit. No, there were other dates that sucked. Chicago kind of sucked. Chicago, yeah. Chicago is like the biggest bummer because it's usually great. It's usually awesome. Um, and uh, one fella sucked the life out of it for me. <laughs> Yeah. But like it was it was underwhelming. Like it was amazing venue and like the staff was cool and we got out on stage and it was like there was no energy in the room and I don't know, like it's like a symbiotic relationship, right? Like yeah. it's hard to fucking Yeah. For sure. Uh Cambridge Mass. But no, no, we didn't talk about Brooklyn oh, enough. You didn't talk about Brooklyn enough. I didn't say like anything, did I? Well, you said it was good. But it was at this place called Warsaw. I've never been there yeah. before. Like we, which is in Poland. Well, yeah, the people who owned it were like Polish as fuck. Like it was like there was a sign that was like "Rock Pierogies." <laughs> Did you get pierogies? You could. I didn't. Oh, I love pierogies. Yeah, um, I mean, I, there's probably like a lot of cheese and fucking dairy in them, so I couldn't yeah. really fuck with it. But the venue was wonderful. They were like actually from Poland. Went up into the back room. And um, there was, like, a bunch of record players and records everywhere. And it was just like, oh, fuck, we can just, like, put on records and, like, listen all day. There was, like, an amazing pour-over setup for coffee and even, like, coffee beans there and, like, a fucking expensive grinder. Um, The bathroom had, like, disposable shower sandals, which I get is a little wasteful, but, like, still, like, pretty good. I don't... Yeah. Everybody's a little pent up, and when there's a nice shower, <laughs> the boys be coming. Uh, 
But then, uh, yeah, like, so it was really nice. The funny thing is, like, we get in there, there's vinyl everywhere. There's, like, I think there's, like, three record players uh, in the respective rooms. And Sandra plugs her phone in and puts music on. I go, like, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> She's fucking hilarious. Oh, you gotta love her. Yeah. You do. You certainly do. And then we had a day off in Brooklyn. Did you do anything fun in Brooklyn? Yes. Okay. What did you do? Uh, I went with Jack, our lighting guy, who is like a 20-year-old yeah. lovely fella uh, that I I bully. I bully him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't actually bully him. I mean, he's actually gotten a lot better. But uh, We went like to Brooklyn proper from this weird spot that we parked the bus at, uh, walked around. Eat tacos that weren't that good, but like, what are you expecting? You're getting tacos in Brooklyn. It's not like right. you're anywhere near Mexico. Uh, then we got on the ferry and just stayed on the ferry. Like, just like out in the fucking, I think it was like the East River. We're just mm-hmm. like chilling, going under bridges. They serve beer on it. It's like a commuter ferry. Mm-hmm. But we're like, we just sat out in the open air, fucking drank, drinking beers, Sandra, Jack, and I. Um, well, Jack wasn't drinking, but. It was like wonderful. Like it was really hot that day, and then we got to we went to wherever the fuck we went, and we got right up to the uh, Staten Island ferry, and we were gonna take that over by the Statue of Liberty, but then someone was like, "Yo, it's like a fifty minute round trip," and I was like, "I've been on a boat. For, we were on the boat for like three hours." <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I think I had enough of just being on a slow boat. I'll tell you something. The Statue of Liberty, massively underwhelming. Really? Yep. I saw it from a distance. It is is not nearly as big as you expect it to be. And when you get near it, you're like, oh. Well, Josh said that it was on a huge platform, which makes it It like a much larger, like it kind of cheats its way. Even then. Even then. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's underwhelming. It's not as big as, like, the way they shoot it all the time and make it look like this huge, it's not as big as it That's the picture I got of it. It looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I like that there was some guy got on the ferry with us. Uh, He was from Chicago. And he sat down, he cracked a beer, and he was like, holy fuck, man, it's like Spider-Man here. And I was like, what? And he was like, New York, man. Crazy, like Spider Man. <laughs> like Spider Man. Like, yeah, man. Lots of fucking things are said here. <laughs> <laughs> but oddly enough, a lot of the places. Oh, excuse me. A lot of the stuff that's um, set in New York is shot in Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, because it's cheaper. And anything Wait. set in Hollywood, Vancouver. Vancouver. Hollywood, LA. Yeah. Los Angeles. California. Cambridge, Mass. Yeah. Home of Harvard yeah. University. Like we were in Harvard. Like, yeah. we were like right in Harvard all day. It was weird. Did you run into a lot of very brainy people? Yeah. And did they tell you how you liked them apples? Um, yeah. Cause, they well, did. but here's the thing. We were. He got her number, so uh, <laughs> so I didn't like those apples. Um, I don't know how I feel about those. No, but like we went out for we went out for like a brunch kind of thing at some like nice restaurant. It was it was pretty good, just whatever. But like they were like community tables, so like you share with anyone. Yeah, and like there was a conversation happening beside us with these two older gentlemen that I took were like maybe professors and they were discussing things that I was just like sitting there going like, holy fuck, man, I am, I got a, I got a brick bouncing around inside my head. Like, (laughs) but there was like, I mean like fuck Harvard. We found this like cemetery that was like Mm -hmm. right next to the venue. Um, let me see. Cause I did take a picture. I did take a picture, but it was like, Fucking super old shit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when I found this sign, I was like, oh, that's not that tight. Um, But, 
Uh, let me see. Let me see. Because I want to read the sign. Yeah. It says Old Burying Ground, burial place of early settlers, Tory land landowners, and slave soldiers, presidents oh. of Harbor of Harvard and prominent men of Cambridge, sixteen thirty five. So it was like, not that tight, but like, it was so fucking hocus pocus. <laughs> like, like all the, I don't know, how, like if I can do a good enough job, like letting you see it, but like the tombstones were all so old that like, yeah. the shit okay. was like, you can't read them. Like most of yeah. them are just like stones on the ground with yeah. nothing. Yep. And we walked through there, and then I was telling this uh, person at the meet and greet about it, and I was like, oh, man, like, I'm not, like, I'm not a spooky dude or nothing like that, but um, I do kind of like it, uh, especially, like, being that it's, like, fall, and, like, mm -hmm. and, you know, Massachusetts is so fucking spooky. Mm -hmm. um, and then she was telling me, she was like, oh, dude, like, the cool part is like you can go out into like the forest and she was like, you just like walk for a while and you'll come across like unmanned, unmaintained cemeteries just mm -hmm. in the middle of the woods. And I was like, I'm not a spooky dude. I will reiterate this, <laughs> but I want that. And I was like, yeah. I was like, where, where do I find, like, is that around here? Like I was thinking like, I'm going to go to a forest in between VIP and fucking <laughs> the Damn. set and like try and find a cemetery in a in a forest. Uh but then she was like, Oh, you gotta drive to like and I'm like, oh fuck. well, I can't drive. I you live in drive. a fucking I trailer. Don't have a driver's license. <laughs> Nobody ever taught me. But I want that so bad. I want to find a cemetery in the forest so bad, dude. And what do you want to do? Then? I don't know. Die? <laughs> Get murdered by a witch's coven? <laughs> Get in trouble. Did you watch did you watch the Sabrina show on Netflix? I watched some of it. Um there's a lot of going in the woods and spooky shit. Yeah, I just uh, I, I where was Harvey? He that he wasn't in it. Yeah, he's in it. He's not as funny. No. He's not funny at all. Yeah. Nobody's funny. Where's Salem, the cat? He's in it. Is he in it? But he doesn't talk. Maybe I should give it another go. Yeah. It's a, it's good. I I come back to. I it. watched. I've watched it like two or three times now. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, Montreal. <gasps> yeah. Now, did the French? Did the French like you? Yeah, they do. Some French. Um, Montreal has always been very good to us, and this time was no exception. It was the worst back room of the tour, I think. Mm. Like it's just like this weird little like. There were like three rooms and they were so small and cramped and weird. It was hard to like live. And then we had a bunch of friends, right? Like yeah. being that, you know, our band is like kind of from Ottawa. That's the closer yeah. show. So we had a lot of friends uh, come out to that show and it's like, we can't really like party with them or hang out with them that well because you just, there's only room to stay. Yeah, there's no space. Um, but it was a lot of fun, and um, the show was great. Montreal's great. Like, that's funny. Like, you go to these places that, like, in your head, you kind of, like, hate because of their hockey teams. Mm -hmm. Like, Boston. Mm -hmm. Boston's wonderful, dude. Like, the people there are so awesome and, like, nice. <laughs> and same with Montreal as well. And, like, I, I said that on stage. I was like, you know, like, I fucking hate the Boston Bruins. And people were like, yeah, because Montreal, obviously, their rivalry goes deeper than the Leafs, mm. like, way deeper. Um, and I was like, but, like, I get there, and I want to, like, be such an asshole, but, like, people are so nice. Like, they're nice about <laughs> hockey. They're nice about the rivalry. Like, fuck, man. And, like, people were like, people weren't happy about that in Montreal, but I... People even in Montreal are pretty nice. Like, unless I'm, like, waving my middle finger in their face going, like, fuck you, the Leafs. <laughs> right? I, um, I cut, I, I shot a ton of footage at the Hall Hockey Hall of Fame mm -hmm. uh, on the, that big Bruins display that they've got. Yeah. And um, I cut it way down in the episode. 
and I did voiceover for it instead of my speaking at the moment. But I was saying some pretty hateful, <laughs> horrible stuff about Boston and the Bruins and like how yeah. if if the Bruins ceased to exist, no one would care. Wow, well, obviously. And like a lot of really horrible things about the Bruins. Um, but I, I decided to tame it now. I was going to be really long and tangential yeah. to what I was trying to do. So I got it way, way back. <clears throat> um, then history. Wait, which should have been the last show of the. Time. I want to talk about something else, but I can't remember where it happened. Okay, let me think about it for a second and picture the back room. It was in Boston. Okay, so Sandra had this friend that she brought out. I'm not going to name her name because this story could be <laughs> embarrassing for her. <laughs> she was lovely. She had had twins, like I, I want to say, like. 15 minutes before. Six months ago. So, like, f- pretty fresh. It was, like, her first time out since then. And I say this to sort of justify that she got a little tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, she was, like, having fun, and I love that. And she's from Newfoundland. Um, so I'm kind of narrowing it down. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Her address is... <laughs> yeah. So, at one point, I was on the bus, and Tim comes onto the bus with tears streaming down his face, and he's just like, his shoulders are just moving, but he's like silent. (laughs) And I was like, Timmy, what's happening? And then I realized he's laughing, and he's laughing like Mm. very, very hard. And he's trying to tell me what's happening, but he can't get it out. And then HK hears that like something weird is happening, because I'm being like, what? What happened, Timmy? And he comes out, and then... Like, Tim is, like, actually crying tears, and HK's there, I'm there, and then all of a sudden, like, we're laughing. HK and I don't even fucking know what the fuck we're laughing about. We're just laughing at how hard Tim's laughing. That laugh, right? Yeah. And then it turns out (laughs) that (laughs) Tim came around the corner, (laughs) and the door to the bus was wide open, and she was, like, laying on her side. Like on the sidewalk beside the bus. And he came out, he was like, What happened here? And I guess she fell from like the top stair of the bandwagon out the door and just like landed on the fucking sidewalk on her side. Which is like she just stayed there? Well, she was just she was there when Tim got there and Tim had like I don't know exactly what happened in my mind. He stepped over her <laughs> and, to get and got on the bus, but I like like he was doing everything he could to not like scream with laughter in her face. And that's so when I caught up with him, he was just like walking onto the bus like beat red with his shoulders just like bouncing. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's what happened. That's a dangerous step. Yeah, and the bottom step wasn't out. But usually out. it's the bottom step. But the bottom step it's wasn't dangerous. out. Like, it pushes in oh. for when you can go. Yeah. But, I mean, she tripped from the top, so... Yeah, that's... I think. That's a, that's a pretty good fall. Yeah. Toronto. Toronto. Should have been the last show of the tour. Probably, yeah. Um... The my dog is freaking. I hear that. Um, as you can hear, I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> the uh, history is a fantastic venue. Yeah, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched from the front row of the balcony. Ooh. Well, I also watched from other places in the venue. Um, but uh. My seats were the front row of the balcony, and it was very nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Very comfy. Um, I would also like uh, the podcast seated. listeners to know that you never ask for guest list. Oh, why? I wouldn't. I mean, I have people that are way looser connections than you. <laughs> <laughs> like, way. That do? Oh, and I give it to yeah. them, because why wouldn't I? See, my whole thing is like... I want to do the things that support the band I love. And if I'm not buying tickets to the show and I'm not buying merch, then what am I doing? That's thoughtful. Right? But so I would gladly I, I would gladly put tickets. you on the guest list. I don't want it. 
Okay. The only time I would ask is if there weren't tickets available. Yeah. Or Some kind if of extended Ticketmaster in- shat our tickets into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, you asked me that one time, but you had purchased tickets and like Jenny had her phone stolen or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And even then you didn't end up using it. You got Ticketmaster, yeah. Uh, got our Ticketmaster account got hacked. We got them back though. Sick. So it was all good. Um uh the stage at history is huge. It's a little bigger than we're accustomed to. <laughs> you took full advantage. Well, of that. I don't know. I saw there are some pictures on the Instagram. Mm. Oh, on the line. Y- you got some serious hops. I've been trying to bring jumps back. Up high in the air. I've been I've been obsessed with bringing jumps back. Like we used to jump a lot when we were kids and then we just stopped jumping. And it's like because well, you get older knees. Yeah, but you just get lazy, I think. And it's like mm. I'm still having a little trouble figuring out like how to time the jumps. Like we used to just mm-hmm. jump all the time and everything was sick. But like over the years I forgot how to do it. So I'm like still trying to figure it out, and Scrooty has joined me. He's like, I saw. He's right in, and I love it. He's even better. He's he's better at jumping than me. Um, but yeah, well, I I often think about stages like I am a gas, and yeah, I you have to fill it. I have to expand to the size of the container. Yeah, yeah. That's like. Uh, it's exhausting. <laughs> uh, like history, <laughs> history is fucking exhausting. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would not. Uh, I would imagine that trying to cover that much space, and it's not fair that you're the only one that has to do it, and you have to do it fast, right? Like the other guys can like move around a little bit, but they sort of slow mo over to each other. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Uh, where you are like you move. From one side to the other side with vigor. Uh, excuse me? Vigor. Oh. Uh, the faster you move, the better. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, sometimes you can sort of fucking strut. But, like, the faster you move and the crazier you seem. And I got to say, like, so I did those stupid show diaries before we left. And, like, I was mm-hmm. out running. A, I dropped fucking 10 pounds. Yeah. Um, which I was a lot happier with the way the pictures looked on this tour, uh, vain or not. I don't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> but also, it's like within the first like two shows, I was performing in the same way I, I, I had performed for the first half. And I was like, all of a sudden, I was like, hey, like I'm not winded at all. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to try and do a fucking like move around a little more. And then I moved around a little more and was like, I'm still not winded. And so I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to just start going for it. And um, I think it's been wonderful. I uh, look forward to like starting a, a little regiment before every tour where it's like, get out and like get my cardiovascular fitness to a level that allows me to a perform my shit well and B put on a fucking show. With plenty of jumps. Do you think um, your new uh, shoes had anything to do with your jumps? Yeah, a little. Yeah. They have like air. They have like, you can see the little air pockets. Yeah, they're Nike Air Max, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely makes it easier to jump if you're not like worried about getting a piece of glass in your foot. <laughs> um, but I've like destroyed those shoes, by the way. Like yeah, they're, well, they're yeah, fucked. Yeah, you got to get a new pair for every tour. Nah, well, they're expensive, dude. Well, you got to call Nike and say, "Hey, I need some of these shoes for my tour." I don't think I want to do that, just based on the way things are produced. <laughs> I perfect idea. Here's what you do: you put it on the rider at each venue, but then somebody still buys it, and it's. St- but just don't get Nikes. Get like New Balance. But, but like we pay for the rider. <laughs> oh, you know, like it comes out of the show. Uh, like unless the show loses, that doesn't work. Then yeah, 
I like I like Nikes. I like wearing Nikes, uh, but uh, the company is, yeah, like all companies, like every major corporation. Yeah. <laughs> like the reality of the matter is, you just can't be a large fucking company and still be ethical. Right, you just can't. You can't. There's no examples. Um. Um. You guys. So, like, how did it? feel after the Lund- or the Detroit sh- or God, Toronto show with all of like friends and family you know what yeah. I mean like did it feel like the last show of the tour yes, yes. um <clears throat> we went out we got fucking hammered <laughs> um you know like you saw the back room like it's a huge mm-hmm. back room it yeah. was like it's more than one room it was rammed it was impossible to fucking move uh yeah. i was running around trying to get everyone beers while simultaneously slugging beers um then we went to some bar and like we got i forget who it was i think it was Truk, but he was like anyone on the protest the hero bus has to fucking leave now because <laughs> like our driver was texting us being like five minutes till we leave and just being like whoa <laughs> but we went back on the bus and just like continue to drink like it, it, we were celebrating you know we, we yeah. just had an awesome toronto show that we all felt really good about and it felt over until yeah. we woke up in london <laughs> did you wake up in london going mhm we went too hard a little bit yeah but like <sighs> Honestly, it's probably not a good thing to say, but like the reality is, like I should be like, I don't fucking care about London. I don't mm. fucking care. Like being a little brat. Like I, I, I don't understand uh, the reason behind booking a show like two hours away in yeah. Canada when it's like uh, the history show is the one that we're trying to like pack. And yeah. I'm not putting this. I'm putting this squarely on us. I, a lot of the people that I spoke to at the VIP were like, hey, we were at the Toronto show last time, but there was a show closer to us this time. And as much as I'm like, right. that's good for you, it's like, that's kind of bad for me. Right. Um, and, you know, like the reasons are fucking because it's money, right? It's right. money. Yeah. But, um, you know, it it was the Toronto show. There were less less people there than last time. Um. Yeah. It didn't feel like that. No, it looked it looked crazy from the stage. It looked wonderful. Yeah, it looked it looked completely. I mean, it looked the same yeah. from the last time I was there. But there's just and, like uh, weird stuff that like we take into consideration, and it's like there are people keeping track of those tickets sold, and it's yeah. like you know they might see that there is a decrease in numbers, so next time not offer us as much money. Right, and uh, the reality is. Uh, this is extremely candid and it's maybe too candid, but everything inside of the industry post pandemic costs more. It's everything went up. Our value went down. Right. And it's like, that's probably true for a lot of bands. I would, I would say most, but not all. Um, but it's like, you're paying a lot more to be out there while simultaneously making less. Yeah. And it's like, Every little consideration that you make needs to be considered, and I, I've never been one to really think about those things. But I see those two shows, and I go, "Fuck!" Like, how did this fucking happen? Like, I like playing in London, I do, but I think the Toronto show hurts the London show. The London show hurts the Toronto show. Yeah, uh, and that is definitely the headspace I was in going into it, being like, "Okay, fuck it, man. I'm giving, I'm leaving it all out there for Toronto. I don't care." Blah blah blah. But then you wake up in London and you go, I do care. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't not care about this. And I'm glad that it happened. I'm glad that there was a show the next day because Toronto was packed out in the back room. Uh, We didn't get to spend any time with Kaonashi. We didn't get to spend any time with fucking 68. Uh, So we got to say goodbye to them properly. I didn't get to spend any time with you. Um, And so... Uh, we played the final show. I screamed almost the entire, <laughs> all the screaming parts. Like I did more. I know singing and screaming, and I felt good. Like I could have sang another set the next day. You sounded 
you sounded fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, like, I think I probably performed a little better than I did in Toronto, to be honest, uh, from a vocal standpoint. And like, like it was in that moment that I was like, no, I didn't give my all last night. I'm going to give my all tonight, like everything yeah. that I have left in the tank. Um, and it was, it was nice. It was wonderful. Yeah, I think um, that that was sort of my theory going in was that like there's nothing left to prove at the London show. Things are gonna like the pressure is mm. off. There's the guys are gonna be a little looser, and uh, and I honestly I thought you guys played fantastic at London. The place was packed. The people were going nuts. Like, I thought it was a really, really good show. I did think it was, like, weird. Like, London usually goes off right off the top, and it was yeah. it was the quietest um, that Clarity was on the entire tour. Yeah. Like, it took the room a minute to warm up. It was yeah. kind of peculiar. But then when it did, it was fucking great, and yeah. we were having fun. The crowd was having fun, and it was just a good time. Yeah, when you were screaming, I was like, fuck, dude, he's doing all this. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. I felt good. And, uh, yeah. We didn't talk about the guest appearance in Toronto. What guest appearance? With Jada. Yeah, Jada. That was so Wasn't cool. she wonderful? Mm hmm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, so we played in LA and she was there. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Jada's here and we're sampling her all night. Going, like, we probably should have thought about this a little harder. <laughs> Uh, but we didn't think about it that hard. Like, just was like, "Hey, you want to do Toronto?" And she was like, "Yeah." She came out, did a sound check, and then did the show. And it's yeah. like, she fucking flawless, killed it. Yeah. Now I do want to yeah. say that um, the fellas in the band um really stepped up. Uh, like I've noticed from you know HK speaking about HK from the first time that he played with us in Australia to now uh it's not that he's a different player but like he has put in so much fucking work and he has mm -hmm. like really become fucking fantastic uh it, it, not that he wasn't before but like there is a marked difference in his playing from the beginning to now and he is like he's a fucking machine um ben was always yeah. he was always great but like he's He's starting to make it his own. Um, and Henry has had moments where he wasn't yeah. all together, you know, where he didn't know the songs as well. And he's really put in a lot of effort to fucking put his best foot forward. And I think uh, I'm proud of those guys for for doing this. And I'm grateful to them for allowing me to continue to play uh, these songs that I love and, you know, do what I do what I love to do. And join me in the fucking brotherhood. And of course, Scrooty. Oh, I was going to say fuck Tim. No. The um, Scrooty I, con <laughs> I consider uh, inside me. <laughs> no, but I include him. I think he shares the same. I think he would echo that sentiment. Um, I had a. I, I, I want to thank you and the rest of the guys. Uh, the, after the London show was uh, some of the most fun I've had in my entire Wasn't life. Wasn't that the best? <laughs> it was really a lot of fun, and that wasn't um, us. And Jenny, that wasn't us. Jenny had a lot of fun for all the sitting on the couch and uh, <laughs> hanging out. She uh, had a lot of fun too. So you know that wasn't us. That was Cage, Sandy, and Sandra. Yeah, I mean, but still. Well, actually, you know what? Timmy DJed it, and Timmy did wonderful. He did. He did a great job. He made sure he picked something for everyone. Yeah. That was very kind of him, very thoughtful. That was, I, uh, he put on something that not many people were liking. and It was mine. It was the one I picked. It was, it was the one for me. It was the Get Up Kids. Yeah. And then halfway through, he goes, Fritzy, this sucks. Oh. And he turned it off. I, I, I don't think that's what I was talking about, but Sandy was, I think it was Tim's wife, Sandy, was trying to get him to turn off one of the songs, and he just said, no, Sandy, everybody gets one. And I think it was when he put on Jack's song. Oh, but so that was really great. Oh, by the that way, that was a lot of fun. The two of you guys singing together, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But uh, so I guess we should talk about it. Like explain what happened after the show. After everybody kind of pieced out of the back room, uh, everybody went up to this emo night, and we, like our entire band and crew, 
Fritzy and Jenny went to our bus, plugged in a fucking phone, and then just had a little dance party. Um, when you say little, it lasted for like two hours. Yeah, well, but it was in a very contained space. <laughs> yeah, we were all just <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it was, Tim DJed it. it was he put on a song for every single person. Uh, yeah, and it was like it was a ton of fun. Yeah, it was. Lovely. Jenny was up dancing at some point. Mm-hmm. Jack and I. Tim even played New Kids. He for played her. New Kids. Everybody gets one. Yeah, uh, she got two. She got two. She played two New Kids songs for her. <laughs> there is a point. Like I watched the video. There's a full video of Jack and I singing "Waving Through a Window." Mm-hmm. Uh, from the Dear Evan Hansen soundtrack. And you can hear Jenny in the background off the top. She goes, this is way worse than New Kids. Because <laughs> I guess when New Kids on the Block, people were complaining. <laughs> Jenny told me that there's only two bands that she likes, that she listens to. Just two. Yeah. It's New Kids on the Block and Taylor Swift, and everything else, just whatever. I would argue that neither of those are bands. No, I would agree. But two musical acts. And that's fair, dude. We had plenty of T-Swift on, didn't we? Yeah. I also have to say, she uh, was a, a very quick convert to Jada. Uh, she really liked the Jada show. Yeah. Jada's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, we. I'm glad that we got the opportunity to do that. Like, the timing and everything. Yeah, that's, that we got that's really that incredible show. that y'all awesome. want to see her uh, album release, because she's... She's wonderful. And she's yeah. in California right now getting ready to do her album release there. And Henry, yeah. delightful Hank, is going to play bass on it. I prepared a game for Ooh. us. Oh, fuck. I didn't make a gift. It's okay. I have one for you. And the only reason I'm going to give it to you today is we don't, I mean, we don't normally do gifts when there's not a guest. No, but sometimes we do. Sometimes we do, but it's not a requirement. I'm gonna make, and I have, I'm gonna make one up. I have one for you, real quick, just because it's timely. Uh, but I want to play this game first, okay. which is, uh, how much do you know about these famous songs about touring? So I'm gonna read you almost nothing. Some lyrics, okay? And you're gonna tell me who is the singer or the. I band. hope one is Lagwagon uh, Sleep. It's Fuck! Not. That's the best touring song. Uh, so here, here's the first one. Well, I've traveled many countries. I've washed my feet in many seas. I've drunk with drifters in Vienna and with punks in old D.C. And I have... It's multiple choice. So if you want to take a stab at it... That sounds familiar. I'll give you. I feel All like right, it's rancid. Is it Frank Black? Frank Turner. Frank Turner. It is yeah. Frank Turner. The other options were Frank Sinatra and Frank Zappa. As soon as you said Frank Black, I was like, oh, it's Frank Turner. If he says Frank again, <laughs> it's Frank Turner. <laughs> I love Frank Turner. Uh, next one. Out there in the spotlight, you're a million miles away. Every ounce of energy you try to give away. No? Okay. Is it Bob Dylan? Bob Seeger? Bob Marley or Bob Geldof? Good Bobs. That one you were going to say, Bob Dole. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Bob Geldof. I don't know for a fact, but like he's he's that fucking We Are the World guy, isn't he? Yeah. It's Bob Seeger. Turn the page. Not Metallica. Turn the page. Yeah. I don't really like Bob Seeger that much, if I'm honest. Uh, my father in law bought me a record, vinyl. Mm-hmm was very thoughtful. He was like, oh, I love this. And I was like, cool, man. I can't wait to dig into some, dig into the fucking sea grave. Uh, I put it on and was just like, oh, this isn't for me at all. <laughs> like, I don't know. It just like did nothing for me. It's very 70s rock and roll, like Springsteen-y kind of. Yeah. Um, he's from Ann Arbor. He's from here. You're always talking about Ann Arbor. Bob. Like, uh, uh, we were at a, a movie premiere, Jenny and I, and he was at this, th- we were like in this like back room with Adam Sandler and the it was Sandman? a movie premiere. Well, yeah. Um, 
one of Jenny's clients was the the writer and director of the movie, so he had the premiere here and whatever. And um, she's like, that guy over there looks really familiar. I think he's a client, but I can't remember his name. And if he's a client, I should probably introduce myself. And blah 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 blah. I was like, Bob Seger's your client? And she was like, Oh, that's how I know. <laughs> My dad held Courtney Cox's baby in a very similar scenario like that. <laughs> I had no idea it was Courtney Cox's no, baby. No, he was supervising the pyrotechnics on a movie, and she was standing there holding his her baby, and he just thought that she was like, he recognized her from yeah. TV, but thought that he recognized her from his life, and he walked up, and he was like, hello, it's so nice to see you again. And he was like, can I hold the baby? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. My dad held her baby for a while and then gave it back. And then um, he walked back and one of his friends that was there with the like special effects team was like, how the fuck do you know Courtney Cox? And he was like, who is Courtney Cox? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. <clears throat> now roll them cases out and lift them amps. Haul them trusses down and get them up the ramps. Because when it comes to moving me, you know you guys are the champs. So that's lovely that he's they are giving such an ode to the crew of what is mm -hmm. clearly a stadium tour. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. I don't know who it is, though. So is it Don Henley? Ew. John Denver? James Taylor? Or Jackson Brown? Don Henley. It's Jackson Brown. God damn it. The song is called Load Out. Loading. This is what the song I always used to sing. Loading. Every time, time um, Josh and I see each other and it's been a while, he reminds me of a song that I used to sing back in the day uh, during Load Out time. And I would sing, Loading time. Jody light a cigarette. Everybody else load up the gear. <laughs> <laughs> That's and I just sit there and smoke a cigarette while everybody loaded. <laughs> Did you ever make like a big show of it to like, oh, this microphone is just such a pain in the ass to move. No. <laughs> no, I would never do that. I would do horrible things like I one time drop kicked Cam while he was carrying a box of merch out to the fan. <laughs> Um, I traced away the fog so I could see Mississippi the Mississippi on her, knees. on her knees. I've never been so lost. I've never felt I've so never much felt so at much home. At Please home. ride my folks and throw away my keys. I woke up in a car. I don't know if that song's about touring, but it's about traveling. It is. Yeah. I woke up in a car. Something corporate. You got it. Well, that's it. You did it. What? Oh, you have the something corporate logo? Yeah. I got matching tattoos with the singer of Something Corporate, and he know you both got yeah, HK the Something Corporate logo. <laughs> HK has it as well, and uh, we were touring there. Our photographer at the time was his photographer, <laughs> and so we were just talking about how much we love Something Corporate like the whole time. And then we were like, "Let's go get Something Corporate tattoos." And then the photographer was like, "You should get one that matches his because he has one too." And we we're like, "Oh." force him to be blood brothers with us <laughs> and so we got them and he sent it to fucking uh andrew what's his face and he, he responded he was like now nah, we're brothers forever but like he has not a fucking clue who we are <laughs> and if he heard our music i think he'd be really confused about why we like him but we do hk and i just i fucking discovered on that tour that we were big something corporate so fans and the weird thing is, I'm a, I'm a leaving through the window or came in through the window, and yeah. he's fucking north, and like really, yeah. and I'm with and you. like I don't really know north at all. That that leaving through the window record is fucking perfect. incredible. It, there's not a miss on that whole album. Okay, so here's my gift to you. I wrote it earlier. Okay. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Fuck you, Fritzy, and your mustache. I 
trimmed it just for you. You should trim it a little higher tomorrow. <laughs> Still a little sloppy down your lip, my man. But I trim mine a little too high on that side. <laughs> my screen name is Queef on a Leash, and I want everyone to know it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't make you a present. That's all right. I sent you um, your present. Okay. Cheese o lantern. Ooh, that's so nice. I like that. What you is this drawn in Procreate? Uh, like the Adobe version. Ew. Essentially. Let me show it. It's lovely. Yeah. I had to give it to you today because it wouldn't make any sense. That's true. Like in a week. So. Um, that's it. That's the whole episode. Yeah. We did it. I'm getting back into the ukulele in a big way, man. Are you? Are you going to feature it on the new record? No. But we are... Um... Every night on the VIP, we did a stripped-down version of Mist and the Migrant Mother. Yeah. On the second half. And um, we just had so much fun doing it that we want to do something with it. Oh, like an acoustic-y kind of? Hmm. Mm. And uh, we'll see what, what happens, but I'd like to put together some kind of thing where Scroot, Ben... Truk, and maybe others. We do something live off the floor and just, like, do that. So if anybody's made it this far in the podcast, comment down below what songs you think would translate well to, like, a stripped-down version. And uh, maybe I'll post a clip of how Mist went some of the nights. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because obviously not very many people got to experience that. What song... Do I think would be a good stripped down version? I think of Life Embossed. Oh, probably. fuck you, dude. We're never doing that again. You said that, but I don't think that's true. I think you guys should put it in the rotation as an open. Why? Because it fucking rocks. <laughs> so dude, I... that would kill a room. If we came out with that. I know you say that, but like, I was watching the crowd. People were fucking going nuts. People love that song. You had one bad experience with it, and now you feel like it's tainted forever. I had 12 bad experiences with it just over the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys don't enjoy playing it, so that doesn't bode well for it. It's just like it never becomes muscle memory. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, no matter how many times we play it, like, all songs usually just, like, become this thing that you can, like, kind of just do without yeah. thinking about. And, yeah. like, it never gets there. It yeah. sucks. Yep. I mean, that's basically how all songs are for me when I try to play them. There was one day where we played that on uh, the tour, and HK, by the way, doesn't have live guitars in his ears. He has the album playing in his ears without the fucking drums, so that if anyone fucks up, it doesn't fuck him up. Right. But sometimes it kind of fucks it up, because we started playing that, and Ben came in with his guitar on the like wrong patch, so it was like clean. He was going, ding it ding it ding it ding it ding it ding it And like, HK's playing his fucking buns off, and I was like, ah, yeah, Let's start this again. Come on. Let's <laughs> fucking have another go. But HK just, he couldn't hear me because he doesn't have he me. So it. he just kept playing and everyone else was just like standing there looking at him going, eh, <laughs> HK. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stopped and we laughed for a long time. That's funny. But yeah, it took a minute to get his attention and be like, oh, stop playing the song. <laughs> that's uh, like the... I think that's one of the things that, like, unless you have experience playing on in-ears and that kind of, like, with the click and all, all the stuff that goes along with that, yeah. that, like, 
most people w- will never have that experience or yeah you know what i'm saying like it's, i mean that's a very different live experience than i've ever had yeah. playing live then you it's know, awesome i think the vast majority of people have it is that. awesome i i do enjoy playing to a click and all that stuff but it, some people adapt to it really easy like jada just came in walked in put a pair of ears in for the first time in her life and just went oh this is cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know how i mean i mean i assume it would be fine but i have no idea who knows well, I think it's at this you know. time that we say, eat shit and go fuck yourself, it's it. Okay. I will. <laughs> Is he she?